San Antonio is known for being the site of a battle that makes Texans proud, but their sports venues are also pride inducing. So here are the stadiums and arenas of San Antonio, Texas. Speaking of the Alamo, Alamo Stadium. It gets the nickname of the Rock Pile, owing to the extensive limestone facade. The stadium was after all built on the site of a rock quarry. I'd be rocked if you told me it wasn't a limestone quarry. The stadium has hosted numerous professional football and soccer teams, as well as college teams. But high school football has always been the main purpose of this stadium. It's the third largest high school stadium in Texas, which means it's probably still in the top five largest worldwide. The stadium is listed on the National Register of Historic Places, so the rock pile won't come tumbling down anytime soon. Toyota Field. This too was built on the site of a former quarry, although I definitely don't think they use much of the quarry remnants as building materials. Toyota Field's design has more in common with the Toyota Camry than it does the rock pile. There is lots of metal and glass out front. The seats in here are all without seat belts though, so you will have to watch the game at your own risk. As with most new soccer stadiums in the US, it was designed to be able to be easily expanded in the future. This one has the potential to double in capacity. If that does happen to eventuate, it will then have more in common with a Land Cruiser. Hero Stadium. Would you believe it, but this place was also built on the site of a quarry. The same quarry, Longhorn Quarry. The area is known as Quarry Park. It's part of the Quarry District down on 3rd. You can also buy business hammocks there. Prior to the completion of Toyota Field, this place hosted the San Antonio Scorpions, who were the biggest soccer club in town at the time, but they no longer exist. The stadium is fairly simple, but it's in good condition. I like how behind one end zone you have a quarried out hill as the backdrop, and beyond the other you have the remaining smokestacks. Alamo Dome. Speaking of towers, the Alamo Dome's most notable exterior feature are the towers in each corner, holding up the roof via attached cables. The stadium was actually built to attract an NFL team to the city, but it failed to do so. One big professional team that did play here though is the San Antonio Spurs. Yes, a basketball team called this big stadium home. With the use of retractable seating, it can convert into a pseudo basketball or hockey arena. But that setup was not exactly ideal for a team competing in the world's preeminent basketball league. Nowadays the Roadrunners, a college football team, and the Brahmas, a UFL team call this place home. It might be slightly too big for both of their requirements, but at least it's something a bit different. Not many college teams play under a roof. Frost Bank Center. If you disregard the Alamo Dome, then Frost Bank Center is the largest indoor arena in the city. The exterior is a much prettier site than the Alamo Dome. It consists of plenty of red brick, metallic cladding, and large windows. San Antonio has just one team in the country's five major leagues, which is a little surprising given the city's fairly large population. Anyway, they are of course the aforementioned Spurs of the NBA, who now play here. The arena was designed with basketball at front of mind, but from opening until 2020, it did host a minor league hockey team as well. They no longer exist. First the glaciers melt, then it's the hockey rinks. Personally, I blame these monster trucks. Not even Volkswagen could get these to pass emissions tests. Next door is Freeman Coliseum, which has a very 50s looking exterior, which is understandable considering that it opened in 1949. The venue was for over half a century the home of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo, but is now the home of the Gunslingers, who are an indoor football team, as you can see. As you might expect of a building this old, the design is fairly straightforward. It's a symmetrical elongated bowl, and that's about it, with few frills. That's not to say it hasn't been kept up to date, I mean that video board is definitely not a 1949 design. 
The Dub Farris Athletic Complex is, as it says on the tin, an athletic complex. It includes a small arena and a swimming pool. But we're focusing on the football stadium. It is seemingly one of the few high school stadiums in the city without a running track, which is obviously a good thing for football fans. If you wanted to watch people running, you could simply visit your local Golden Corral and wait for them to put out the butterfly shrimp. <laughs> Situated right by the airport is Comalanda Stadium. Like Hero Stadium, this belongs to the Northeast School District. To be honest, it's certainly the less impressive of the two. It is, after all, much older. Design-wise, it is very much your typical Texan high school stadium. There are no superfluous features, unless you want to count the trees that are sprinkled throughout. But it does the job, I'm sure. Beyond the north end zone is a little gymnasium called Jimmy Littleton Gymnasium. There's really not a whole lot to say about it. It's as if they told the architect to ensure that there is nothing interesting about the design. Function over form. Nelson W. Wolf Municipal Stadium, also known simply as Wolf Stadium. This place is home to the San Antonio Missions. Missions is an odd name for a team, but it's a fitting one considering that the earliest European buildings in the area were Spanish missions. Including, of course, the Alamo. As you'd hope for, the architecture does reflect that. Most notably, these two towers. I do think they went a bit too far in adhering to the mission theme by forcing any heathen attendees to convert to Christianity. But it's their stadium, they can do what they want. Noisy neighbours are never really desirable, but having an Air Force base next door does certainly add to the spectacle. Unfortunately, the US Air Force weren't willing to do a flyover every time a missions batter hits a home run. Something about millions of dollars of taxpayers' money being wasted, whatever. The best feature of this ballpark is not one that's immediately visible or audible, that being the all-you-can-eat fiesta deck. I think they like food in this city. Gustafsson Stadium. <sighs> mm. You know, I think I'm just going to have to sit this one out. <sighs> I'm tired of putting on this Australian accent. It's hurting my vocal cords. D.W. Rutledge Stadium is yet another high school football stadium. At least this one has a bit more going on. The main stand in particular with its distinctive exterior and the large section of chairback seats and... well, that's about it. It opened way back in 1959. But despite its age, everything in the stadium looks clean and new. So, das ist gut. In the far northern outskirts of the metropolitan area, we have Warrior Coliseum, which is the newly built home of the Piper Warriors. To be honest, this is like 20 miles away from the center of town, so I'm not 100% sure if it counts as San Antonio. But whatever, I've included it. Here it is. It is a solid all-round stadium. Oh, and if you're tired of the boring traditional flagpole, and also really like fire trucks, this place has got you covered. Where's a bald eagle when you need one? And those were the stadiums of San Antonio. Of course, there is a seemingly endless amount of high school stadiums that are under the 10,000 capacity cutoff, but we'd be here all day. Thanks for watching, have a good one.